Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I'm so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is a really cool interview with another amazing woman in the middle. This week, we're taking a look at astrology and how you can use it to gain important insights that could help you with your brand in midlife. My guest today is Leslie Tagorda, who calls herself a brand navigator. She guides brands and people from unknown to unmatched by illuminating their star-charted treasure maps, which are astrological natal charts. She has helped hundreds of women-owned businesses, nonprofits, and startups with their branding and marketing, where she saw the same patterns of hiding and staying small at the expense of undervaluing contributions and remaining stuck in the same old rut, right? Who can relate to that? Leslie was able to help by looking at these patterns and created her signature Astro brand framework of branding. This framework positions a brand to stand out from the crowd using practical business strategies and astrological insights to energetically align. Once understood, this can really free a person or a brand to believe, embrace, and become the visionary they are called to be. Now, Leslie really gets it. She was stuck for over 15 years in her business. She was surviving but not thriving. That is like playing small, staying behind the scenes, and not sharing her expertise with others. Now she's much more in alignment. Her branding, visual identity, and web design studio specializes in finding and creating the brand that was written in the stars for you using your unique astrological birth chart as a guide. So even if you think astrology is a bit too woo for you, I think you'll get something from this really interesting interview. The thing is that there has never been a better time to brand who you are. What could be better than to believe, embrace, and become the contributor and the leader you were meant to be? The world needs your voice, and astrology just might be the thing that gives you the perspective and insight that you've been looking for. Enjoy this interview. Hi, Leslie. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Women in the Middle podcast. Hi, Susie. I'm so glad to be here with you today. Well, I was super excited to have you in because lately we've been talking a lot about personal brand in my mastermind, and it's just come up so much as a topic that's super important for midlife women as, you know, transition is such a, so much a part of what's going on at this point in our lives. So to really think about who you are and what you stand for, uh, we could just use a little more help. And I love that about your perspective. Oh, yes. Um, So I love talking about branding, as you know, and um, from a business perspective, as well as from a personal perspective, right? Like, because we can, um, we get to choose how we want to be seen if we're doing it correctly. I love that because so much of our lives, that is not what's happening. As I like to describe it, uh, for about 20 years or so before midlife, we're just pretty much in a chaotic blur. Just like a whirling dervish or a Tasmanian devil just responding to stuff. Oh, gosh, yes. And especially for, you know, uh, women who are over 35, really, um, we were really taught to not claim our power, to not be who we, are, who we really naturally are, instead to, like, fit in some mold of what a woman is supposed to be like. And, gosh, that is so stifling. I'm having a little bit of a flashback when I moved from the town I was going to university as in after grad school, and I moved to Toronto, the big city, uh, to take my first job. And I remember being so hung up on my wardrobe and having matching suits and having pantyhose and black patent leather shoes and just even a briefcase that was 
not like uh, a soft-sided one, one that looked really, really professional. I felt like I was so influenced by culture and movies back then. Things have changed so much. Yeah, I, I feel like back was that must have been in the 80s, was that? It was 1989. 1989. <laughs> <laughs> we, that was a time of conformity, right? Um, and now it's such a wonderful time because the world is looking for diversity. Like c- conformity just doesn't work anymore. And now with, you know, your audience, women in the middle, who are the trailblazers, who've done it all, seen it all, it's your chance to shine and show the younger, younger generation what it's all about. Share your experiences and contribute to this new paradigm. Oh my God, I love that. I'm always talking about older and wiser, but we tend to only want to think about older. <laughs> we forgot that the whole wiser thing is really a thing. So tell me a little bit about what was going on in your 40s that brought you here. Yeah, well, I, um, I, I look young, but I am not. I'm 45 years old. <laughs> that sounds young to many. <laughs> and I am quite the late bloomer. So, um, you know, I, I, of course, I talk about astrology and I look at personal brand from astrology. And astro- astrology is really a way of looking at our life um, in kind of a cyclical manner. As all of these um, archetypes and planets move around, they trigger certain parts of our life, especially middle age. Now, in our 40s, we go through many different transits of the outer planets that kind of kick our butt. And so I imagine, what were you doing at 41 and 42? I imagine that was a challenging time for you. It was very busy. Like I have three kids and I had my kids a little later too. It was in my uh, early to mid thirties. And so, yeah, in the early forties, it was pretty chaotic. Is that what was going on for you? (laughs) Yes. So as the late bloomer, um, normally at 40, 41, 42, around there, um, there is a transit called the Uranus opposition that really is the peak of midlife crisis, right? Mm. This is the, you know, you always hear about the, um, the stereotypical um, older guy who hits his 40s and he buys a race car or even a woman, right? Um, a lot of divorces happen. For me, I got married and had a child. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And that really disrupted my life. Um, But I don't think I had any confidence really until I was in my 40s. My 40s just seemed to be, there's a lot of chaos and there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but there's so much more self-assurance. Definitely. Did you, did you... um feel always attracted to this sort of work? Or was it something that you came to later, just like having a child later? (laughs) (laughs) I've loved astrology since the sixth grade. Um, Yeah, it's kind of been this lifelong passion, but I didn't start working with astrology for like client facing or customer facing things until very recently. Um, I started my own business back in 2004. So right after, um, right around when I was 30, I started my own business in web design. Um, And so since 2004 until now, my firm has been doing web design, but it's definitely evolved from, you know, just doing web design and branding design into more brand strategy and business strategy, just because of all the experience I picked up along the way. And what was it that that encouraged you to be open to bringing your passion, your true passion, into your formal contribution? Yeah, a total breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds interesting. What happened? <laughs> so, um, said baby was born. <laughs> he was 41 going on 42 and going, what the heck am I doing with my life, you know? At that point, my web design firm was pretty much kind of running on its own. I wouldn't say that I had any passion in it. And I was really starting to question, like, what am I doing with my life? Should I just throw it in in the towel? Why am I doing this web design thing? 
Um, and I started doing all of the branding exercises that I normally reserve for my clients. And I was like, this is just not giving me any great information. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, no wonder, like, my branding wasn't, like, it was, I wasn't producing really amazing results for my clients. I couldn't even get amazing results for myself. And that's when I decided to open up my astrological natal chart, right, going back to my passion. And I was looking at my chart and all of these things started popping up at me. And I was like, wait, I was looking at a brand, a personal brand, or my business brand as this kind of flatlined one archetype entity. But when I look at astrology, as you know, most of us know, here know our sun sign, right? Like, hey, what's your sign? And we'll all talk about as our sun sign. But our astrological natal chart is so much more complicated than just our sun sign. And when I started looking at my chart and how I was expressing those different energies, I noticed there was like this huge gap between Mm -hmm. how I was presenting myself and the potentiality of the power within my chart that I needed to be presenting myself as. Now, did you find that comforting that it explained a disconnect for you the way you were out of alignment or were you uh, just kind of shocked? Like what what kind of a reaction did you have to that information? It was 100% validating. Oh, so good. (laughs) And then of course, you know, the self-critic kicks in. Why didn't you notice this before? How are you waste, wasting all this time? <laughs> right? <laughs> because you weren't, you weren't meant to notice it before, right? I wasn't meant to notice it before. And so once I, once I looked at my astrological natal chart and knowing all of the branding and business strategy that I had, and I started making um, connections between them, I, in, within one month, I had put together an entirely new framework for branding. It was wow. fast. Wow. Yeah, it's so important to live in alignment. And like I said, my clients talk about this. We talk about this a lot. Mm-hmm. I think so much of this midlife funk, this phase when we're just something is off and the way you described it, it's a gap. It, it, sometimes it's a gaping hole of <laughs> yeah. disconnect right? So there's something really off. Uh, And maybe things were working before, maybe they weren't, but sometimes they were. But there is something about aging and going through the different stages. It's not always age. A lot of it has to do with stage. But there is a big transition. Uh, When your kids are older, or you've been at a job for 20 years, or something significant, some kind of a wake-up call, or something happened with your parents, or your marriage, or who knows what, but shit happens at this oh. age. <laughs> oh, yes. It's, I'm an early bloomer in a lot of those things. <laughs> exactly. So there is a gaping hole and it's, there's so much discomfort, almost agitation when things are out of alignment like that. And I know alignment sounds like kind of Oprah-y type of word, but maybe it comes up a lot in your work. Oh but God, yeah, yes. like you, you can tell when you're not content. With me, that's how it showed up. I didn't feel content anymore, and I was sitting in that for about five years. For me, it was 45 to 50, Mm -hmm. Um, and I'd never felt like that before. I was always very content, and I wasn't, and it took me a long time to sort it out. I didn't know anything about coaching. I didn't know to reach out to anybody like you, but I really felt like I didn't know what the point was anymore in terms of what are my goals. They weren't clear anymore, where they were clear for a very long time. So what was it like for you to have that kind of confirmation and like have a new sense of a professional purpose? (sighs) Well, it's kind of related to what you were talking about. Like all of it, like we think that our purpose, right? Like at at certain times I have thought this and, and when I say we or the collective, we thinks that our purpose is like this one thing that is unmoving, but when you're goal oriented, you know, you've raised your kids, you've gotten to a place in your marriage where you're content, all these things that you've kind of checked off your list. And then all of a sudden, there's nothing to go after anymore. That's when you're like, wait, the the rug's been pulled out from under me. And, you know, then you can kind of sit in that murky mire, right? For like you did for five years, like Mm -hmm. I did for 15 years. (laughs) (laughs) Such an overachiever. (laughs) Such an overachiever, yes. Oh, gosh. 
Um, and so after I figured out this kind of new, um, new way of looking at things with astrology and blending it in with like business strategy and branding strategy, I was like, this, I have to bring this into the world. This is my vision. This is such an easy tool for insight. You know, I don't care if people don't believe in astrology. They think it's too wacky or spiritual or woo-woo. I'm not there to change people's minds. But if they just have an open heart and an open mind as to the energies that are represented in astrology, it's kind of like a psychological assessment hmm. of what our true potential is. So once I really figured that out, I was like, I have to bring this out to more and more people. And because I have a background in business and helping other women business owners, I was like, I need to help other women business owners find their aha moment and really step up to that role of, of leader, of wise woman, of elder, of sage, whatever you want to call it. And it doesn't matter what age you are when you finally decide to believe in yourself, embrace your gifts, and then become that person that you are meant to be. Exactly. So you're really saying that it's kind of just another data point for insight. Yes, it's an amazing tool at insight for, for insight. I love that. So when you had your aha moment, what was the biggest thing you realized about the way you were um, conducting your business? Uh, the biggest thing that I noticed about conducting my business was that I was playing small. How did that show up for you? Oh, goodness. How did that show up? It showed up in undervaluing my services. It showed up in always trying to prove myself to people. It showed up as not being confident and not presenting myself confidently. And, you know, that spidey sense, that energy that you put off when you're not confident, everybody and the neighbor's dog can smell that. For sure, for sure. <laughs> and do you know why you were playing small? Because this comes up so often with women our age. Yeah, I, it's, I think it's a number of things, right? It's um, schooling and training that teaches us that we're not enough. So you bought into that. Oh, 100%. <laughs> um, you know, it's the, the conformity of not being socially or like a socially accepted, like, I don't know what that word is, but like, I'm not beautiful enough. So I'll never be of value. Oh right? my that, gosh. You guys, I know you're just listening to a podcast, but Leslie's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I think that has changed. I look at pictures of myself like pre-aha and post-aha, and that's like one thing that keeps on coming up. Oh, Leslie, you're glowing, you're glowing, you're <gasps> glowing. And I love it that. Is, right? Like yeah. I, you probably have felt the same way too. I'm happy. I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, that everything came together. There was no wasted time. Whereas before I thought I was wasting time when I was out of alignment. And now I see that nothing was wasted. Everything now I can see has led me to this work. It's amazing. Yes. Oh my gosh. And you're, you know, I'm looking at your chart. <gasps> and, <laughs> and everything, you know, all those things that you say are, you know, are written there. Um, we, you know, we talked earlier about you being a Leo. Um, you have a lot of Leo energy, that fiery energy, right? And like with Leo, I just have all my, my notes here that I want to just, it's like you are radiantly expressive. And when you're not allowed to radiantly express your creative gifts with your world, you're out of alignment. That is so true. And you know, I have felt that way with creativity uh, for a lot of my career, it, I was in situations where there were a lot of levels of decision making. Oh. And, you know, it's very hard when you're a creative person to, to create when you have to get buy in from so many people and it ends up slowing the process down. And you're prevented really from getting feedback to continue the creation in the most you know, in a way that has the most integrity is to get feedback and to continue to create. And when there's a lot of red tape and people aren't always 
the same like-minded people, it can really slow things down and be very, very frustrating. That's for sure. Oh, yes. And especially for somebody with super strong Leo like you, not only is your son in Leo, but you're also your rising sign. And we can talk about what that means also. When both of those things are in Leo, like you're, you know, like you're the lioness. Who's going to like tell the lioness what to do? <laughs> Most of the people <laughs> in my world. <laughs> But now look at you, you're like, you've embraced the role of lioness, you know, having fun, being respected, creating anything that your heart desires, like you're, you are in complete alignment to your natal gifts right now. Oh, that's so great. Thank you for that. And you know, one thing that you mentioned is I really do like to have fun. And I have noticed with so many midlife women that uh, we, they want to have more fun. We want to have more fun. But it's sometimes uncomfortable or confusing as to how to integrate having more fun. Yet, it's a common regret that people have that they didn't, they weren't as happy as they thought they could be. So, I, uh, I love that that's reflected there. And I do feel much freer now with this type of work to have more fun, help people in the way that I feel really connected. You know, it's just, it's really, really good. I love what you're doing. And there's something else in like your chart that we didn't talk about last time, but you have um, Jupiter in the 11th house, uh, sorry, not in the 11th house, in the seventh house of relationships. So in the seventh house of relationships, um, this is getting a little bit deep into astrology. It's for you, it's ruled by Aquarius. And so when you have that idea of the people that you're supposed to be serving, That's in the seventh house with Aquarius. Aquarius is about bringing communities together and being innovative. And then having the lucky planet of Jupiter just expanding all of this. It's like you're really serving and putting people, serving women and putting them together in a community to help them expand their greatest lives. Oh my gosh, Leslie, that's exactly what's happening. (laughs) <laughs> so I have a mastermind that's super fun and women are having huge transformations and I'm launching a, uh, a membership too because um, midlife women, women in their 50s, women who are experiencing all of this transition really want to be with like-minded women. So, oh, I, and I love doing that. It brings me such um, satisfaction and joy. Oh, yes. And you're doing it in a very unique way, innovative way. You're not doing it like everybody else. You're not having like a, what you think of like the elders as having like, you know, a a stitch and bitch club or anything. (laughs) Like no freaking way. (laughs) That is not what Susie's doing. Oh my gosh. It's so funny you mentioned stitch because one of the biggest epiphanies I had was around needlepoint. And (laughs) I saw um, along the way, I was doing a needlepoint project and I, And I happened to end up in this wonderful needlepoint store. And I'd never been before. I was just learning. And I saw all these women leaning over this table with the owner of the store just being so focused on learning the stitches. And this was all in this beautiful space with all these beautiful threads and canvases all over the walls. And I just walked out of there thinking, I'm I'm a public sector employee for decades and this woman figured out how to teach other people needlepoint. And why, why am I not doing something that's more fun? <laughs> like, I'm like, yes. I, it's not that I wanted to teach people needlepoint, but it's like somebody that I know now has figured this out. And it's so creative and it's so um, important to help other women find things that they love. I, so many of my clients don't have hobbies. And they don't even know how to figure out how to have a hobby. So finding that is, is really fun. Yeah. Um, wherever Leo falls in somebody's chart is where we can look to find the key of where to bring more creative fun in their lives. And for you, your Leo on your ascendant is um, in your first house. So it is like, it is your being, it is your outward brand. It is your personal brand to be this like fun firecracker. Like, <laughs> that is who you are. That explains it. I laugh a lot here on the women in the middle podcast. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, one of the things that you said when we were talking about the interview was really thinking about um, how we choose how we want to be seen. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. So if we don't choose how we want to be seen, somebody else will choose it for us. And oftentimes, again, that gap that we were talking about, that there is a huge gap of how somebody sees us versus how we desire to be seen. Exactly. I really see that. And oftentimes, I, I think that just unconsciously, we don't think that we, we have this power to choose how we want to be seen. But we, ha- we are the only people that have that power to choose how we want to be seen, right? And so um, oftentimes when I'm looking at a natal chart, I will look to the moon to kind of uncover um, like the deepest desires. The moon in astrology represents emotion and intuition. And so the placement of the moon in the sign and the house gives me a lot of insight as to how this person deep down inside wants to be seen. So for example, with you, Susie, your moon is in the third house of Libra. Now, even though we know that you radiate fun and you, um, your whole personality and your whole brand is built around this Leo archetype of, um, of just like having fun and being creative and being noble almost, um, your moon sign tells me in Libra in the third house, like Libra is about, um, it's about being harmonized and bringing balance and bringing people together, like with lots of social, um, social interactions and even a little bit of popularity. So, and in your third house of communications. So I know that's going a little bit, probably a little bit deeper astrology talk than um, most of your audience might be familiar with. But what this tells me is that, hey, I think Susie really does want to be a little bit famous and be known. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's so funny. I really, um, it's funny because I don't feel motivated by that, but I feel motivated by helping as many women as I can. So that means being more visible, right? Because you can't help people if you're not trying to find them. Right. And then, uh, and then that goes to the third house, right? Because the third house is about communication. You have a message to communicate with people. And so if the, your, your, I, the, um, what I said earlier about the idea of like being famous, you're not wanting to be famous for fame's sake. You're, you want to have like a, a bigger platform to be visible so you can spread your message further. That's exactly it. And what you said about um, communication really resonated because when I was stuck in that spin for five years myself of not being content, the one thing that I did see clearly eventually was that I was missing one-on-one connection. I was missing connection with people. And while I was in a communication capacity, it wasn't one-on-one. I wasn't really having a chance to meet the people that were affected by the, uh, the work that I was doing. And I really missed that. So um, doing this work and having the podcast and coaching has really helped me that way. Did you find the same thing? Did you find some things that you were missing when you looked at your charts? When I looked at my own chart, what, what did I find that was missing? I, I think what I was finding was a lot of resistance. <laughs> um, resistance to embodying the full potential of certain aspects of my chart. Hmm. Um, so resisting that, um, the resisting to step into a role of leadership, you know, like when you're playing small, even, even though you want to teach a lot of people, if you don't step into the role of leader, if you're resisting being the leader because you have certain fears or trepidations or, or whatnot, then you're living out of alignment. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So I, it showed me where all of the places where I wasn't stepping into my full potential. Hmm. So it kind of freed you up? Yes, and <laughs> gave me greater responsibility. <laughs> I hate when that happens. 
Oh gosh. <laughs> But it sounds people. like you've never. It sounds like you've never looked back. Oh gosh, no! I am so happy to have found this path, to have found this platform, just like how you have your platform. I'm so happy to be where I am now, and I don't look back at the time that I was stuck as necessarily wasted. It was a lot of lessons that I can now share with other women business owners because I know that every single women business owner that I've ever worked it with has been in that same kind of stuck, murky spot before. It's murky, all right. (laughs) (laughs) Now, another thing we talked about when we were preparing the interview um, that I really wanted you to go deeper into is about being a mentor. And uh, this has come up a lot in the podcast. And I had an opportunity to interview some of the women who have been my mentors since I've been an entrepreneur and also had a chance to interview somebody who who I've been a mentor for. And I think that midlife women have a massive opportunity to be mentors because we are older and wiser. And you told me there's something about Saturn that helps with this. Can you go into that a little bit? Yes. So um, Saturn, the, the Saturn represents the archetypal energies of, um, of responsibility, of authority. Certain, uh, certain astrologers will kind of give you like the, the low vibration about the taskmaster and the grandfather who's structuring everything. Um, but I'm, I'm more Pollyanna than that. <laughs> <laughs> I like to look at the bright side. So really Saturn, what it means is that it's the energies that help us create structures in our life, um, help us create, um, give us responsibility to help us achieve the goals that we really want to create in our life, right? So at our highest level of Saturn, it helps us achieve what we really want. And if we're not paying attention, if we're being really unconscious, Saturn is going to feel like fate. It's going to feel like fate is knocking us around because we don't have the structures. We haven't claimed that responsibility, right? So Saturn astrologically takes 29 years um, to circle around the sun. So every 28 to 30 years, depending depending on someone's unique chart, it will come back to the place that it was at the time of your birth. And this is called a Saturn return. So a lot of, um, you know, astrology is very, very popular right now, especially with the millennials and younger. And so the first Saturn return happens around 29 years, um, years old, and you'll, people will start fig- feeling around 28 to 30. And at that time, Saturn heralds in um, the adulthood. Hmm. There, right. <laughs> right? There's no excuses. You are fully an adult. Your youth is behind you. You need to take responsibility. So people might get married. They might start a new business. They typically get rid of things that are no longer serving them. So when Saturn return happens again, around anywhere between 58 and 60, and you'll start to feel the energies starting to ramp up around 56, 57. You know, and then the, it, it, it starts to dwindle. It's not like just this one exact moment in time. You'll start to feel it build up. This is a huge other um, major cycle of experience where one part of your life closes and the next one begins. So I imagine um, you're, om- um, Susie, you're almost at your Saturn returns. You have a couple of more years to go but you're probably already feeling some of the things that Saturn wants you to know, right? Um, you're, are, you're already probably feeling like, what can I get rid of? Um, how am I not relating to certain things in my life that are no longer serving me? Um, what new structures can I put into my life to help me achieve those next goals, right? Yeah, you're right. I have just started <laughs> to entertain some of those thoughts. Yes. Very interesting. Yeah. When, when Saturn return hits you full, full throttle around, you know, 58 or 59, and we can do your chart and find out when that is, um, you know, like stuff's going to go down. (laughs) (laughs) 
Maybe I'll finally declutter the house. <laughs> that would, you, you know, you might, I don't know how big your house is. That would be like a perfect time for like empty nesting, you know, like sizing down, um, decluttering, pursuing a new hobby or creative passion. Um, and for a lot of us, it's embodying maybe a new career path altogether. Hmm. That's so interesting because so many of us think that we're too old to oh, gosh, no. start anything <laughs> new, right? And it really is just the way you think about a neutral number. But I have talked to so many women who think they're too old and that thought closes down any ideas about what's possible before you even get started. Oh my goodness. Well, if you were to ask a 29-year-old if they're too old, guess what they're going to say? They'd say yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we, being, uh, being middle-aged or, or older and like embodying this truth that you are now an elder or a wise woman, whatever, we need a better, we need better language mm -hmm. around that because like all of those words have such baggage, right? That we can just be like thrown out. But if we think about like ancient cultures, um, they really revered people who made it to 58, who made it to 60. They became um, pillars in their community. So why would that be different for us now? It is different. You're so right. Because thinking of myself as an elder <laughs> feels old and it feels like, well, it's just a thought, of course, but an elder seems like even older than I am. Like an elder seems like I'm conjuring up images of movies or right. cartoons, you know, where the elders are walking around with large canes, you know? Right. <laughs> and right. so it really, it's, it's society and culture that is really mucking this up. It, it really is. And I think, you know, as the, in 2020, there's a huge paradigm shift and I think that's really going to be a wonderful time for people who are more mature. And now, if if somebody, you know, if one of your, if one of the listeners here, you know, they've been working for 20 years in the same career, right? Now they're moving into this next phase of their life and they're pruning their life, basically. They're getting rid of the things that are not serving them so that they can now reclaim their authority. Oh, I love that. Yes. Because Saturn is about resp responsibility and authority, right? So even if you start a new business, like say, I'm going to go into coaching for the first time, like, like you, Susie, right? You went into coaching late in your life after mm -hmm. a long career, but you had this epic long career and this, this wealth of experience that you bring into your coaching practice that a 20, you know, a 30 year old coach who maybe has been doing it five years, like really what's the, <laughs> I know no nothing is wasted, right? Like all of that experience, even if it feels like it's not relevant, somehow it is. Yes. And that's how we can really step into our personal brand and reclaim our authority. Even if somebody is starting a brand new business right now, you have a wealth of experience behind you that adds to all of the juicy, yummy goodness of your, your wisdom. Oh, I couldn't agree more. So Leslie, what's your best advice to women in the middle? What is something that somebody could do right away to start capitalizing on insight from astrology? Yes. So there are lots of different sites where you can go and get your natal chart done. One of my favorite sites, and I'm, I'm not affiliated in any way, is astro.com, A-S-T-R-O.com. And you plug in your birth time, your birth place. Um, you actually really need your time of birth. That really helps. So, you know, if you have to do some sleuthing, getting your... Um, birth certificate. Um, you really need the time of your birth and the place of your birth because it's going to give you the most accurate chart reading. So we talked earlier about our sun being kind of like the core of what we, what we do best. That's how we have like a, what we radiate. 
but our rising sign is the outward experience that people have of us. And so for Susie, her sun and her rising are both the same. They're both in Leo, but that's not, that's, that's not common all the time. So your rising sign, you might have a different, like I'm a Gemini rising. And so when we look at our rising sign, when we can embody at the highest expression of that zodiac, then we're going to feel really in alignment with, um, others are going to feel in alignment with us when we embody our rising sign. I never even paid attention to rising sign because it sounded too complicated and a little too woo for me. So I'm like, <laughs> ah, I don't know. I don't even know what that is. But I didn't know that if there's one thing to look at, like all of us know our sun signs, but that that would be the thing. That's so yeah. good. And and you said this is this embodies how other people experience us. Yes. Yeah, so when I talk about in a business branding perspective, the, the rising sign is the outer brand. It's how you package up the design of everything, all of your services, all your systems, all packaged up neatly in the rising sign. And a personal brand, whether you know, you're know you a mom or you're an employee or you're a contributor in your, um, in your community, um, your rising sign, when you really align to that rising sign, you are just going to claim your authority. You're going to be very well connected to how others already are perceiving you. I love that. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. It really does. And I love that you distinguished um, like a professional brand with personal brand. Uh, because that's so relevant. Like this information is insightful at whatever level. I love that. So for example, like I know, like I mentioned earlier that I was a Gemini rising. And so if we think about the Gemini archetype, um, it loves to tell stories. It likes to connect with people. It knows vast amounts of knowledge. And so when I can embody that idea of connecting with people through stories then I'm already better aligned with um, connecting with my ideal customers or connecting with my community. Oh, I get it. That's perfect. That's perfect. So Leslie, I know you have a new program coming up. Tell us a little bit about it. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. So I ha- my flagship signature program is called Crystallize. And it's for visionary women business owners who want to take their brands from unknown to unmatched. Wow, I love that. And how can people get a hold of you? Of course, I'll put the details in the show notes, but what's your main, uh, what's your website? Yes, so my website is newmooncreative.co. So it's not com, it's .co. And there you can find out more about me, about my services. I do, you know, mini readings. I have this crystallized program. It's a six week um, brand coaching program for businesses. Um, It's, it's really for women who are really, really ready to claim their visibility. They're tired of playing small. They want to be seen. They want to share their message. They want to contribute their wisdom to the world. That's awesome. So again, the information will be in the show notes. You can get a hold of Leslie and make sure that you get what you need. Now, I understand you also have a freebie. I do have a freebie. Um, the freebie is called For Direction. And basically, it's a, it's a freebie, a, a little mini training that is also based on your rising sign that helps you create a compass rose for your brand. So if you're using this for your personal brand, it's going to tell you um, who to, what qualities to embody, and what qualities to magnetize. But if you're running a business, it's really helpful to understand who your ideal customer is and how you are supposed to be seen in the greater society. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much for offering that to the listeners of the Women in the Middle podcast. And thank you so much for taking some time and being with us today. Uh, The information is super interesting, and I love taking a look at it with the midlife lens because we really are older and wiser. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Yes. (laughs) And any place we can get more insight about moving forward and managing this important transition like a boss is very welcome. So thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Susie, for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. 
Wow, so interesting, right? I loved speaking with Leslie. Personally, I'm always open to being on the lookout for insight and perspective. Does astrology resonate with you? One thing's for sure. I know what I don't know, and there's so much out there that we don't understand. I love when Leslie said that she thinks of astrology as an easy tool for insight, that she's not here to change people's minds, but open to energies represented in astrology about true potential. I also love when she used insights from astrology to describe a classic midlife funk and her personal story. That something she loved and was passionate about since she was a little girl still has the power to turn her on and create a lot of motivation and happiness in her life. She's always loved astrology, and it really begs the question, what have you always loved? What has always captured your attention? For sure, you can see how important it is to explore the things that you really love and have always been important to you. Just like astrology, they are significant clues to what you need more of in your life. Well, that's it for this episode. My focus as a midlife coach is to help you get excited about your life again. Being the queen of your brain domain is the very best way to be. Check out the show notes and more information and links at susierosenstein.com. Download my free ebook, Nine Secrets to Get Unstuck in Your 50s, at susierosenstein.com forward slash nine secrets. Whenever you're ready, there are three great ways that I can help you learn to think on purpose so that you can get excited about your life again this year. The first way is to join the free Women in the Middle Community Facebook group and connect with other amazing midlife women who are ready to start regret-proofing their lives, just like you. Just head over to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. The second way is to work with me directly and get unbelievably effective coaching to take you from being stuck and confused to being crystal clear and excited about your future. If you're interested in applying to work together, just go ahead and grab your kickstart call at www.talktosusie.com. And the third way, get on the wait list for my new midlife membership, Finally First. If you want to be Finally First, head over here right away. This is an upbeat virtual community for 50 plus women who want clarity, courage, and connection to make sure that they don't have regrets and that they can get excited about their lives again too. Just sign up at susierosenstein.com forward slash membership. Let's do this, ladies. Let's learn to think on purpose. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next week.